let's talk a little bit about collision. Let's start with the our basic logo object. What I'm going to do is have the logo fall down onto a plane, which will be the collision plane, and it'll just impact it. So, first of all, I'm going to start with the logo up out of sight, and I need to add a collision object. I want it to be a plane. I'm going to open up my FX browser because it is just much more convenient to do it this way and select collision. Now it defaults to a sphere. I want to have a flat plane that kind of lines up with my ground plane. I'm going to click on properties which opens up a properties much like we have in our object properties but this is separate. I'll move this off for here. I want it to be a plane up in the air because it defaults to one meter so we're going to put that back to zero and I'm just going to leave it at that and this is our scene right now the logo up in the air nothing happening if I hit start nothing happens and that's fine because I haven't applied anything to my logo yet so object properties for the logo Logo selected, dynamics, hard, or hard effects if I calculate it. Still nothing happening because there's no forces being applied to that object. So I need to add, I could add gravity. In fact, it'd be very easy for me just to go in here and add gravity. But keeping things as simple as possible and uncluttered, because things do tend to clutter up. I'm just going to give my object itself some gravity. So I'll put in uh, negative 9.8. We'll be mathematically correct here. The interesting thing is under the collision setting for my logo object, once I added hard effect, collision node all. So it defaults to all, which means it will respect that collision object. So let's take a look here. I hit calculate. And there we are. It drops down and it falls into place. Everything stops. The O's kind of fall over. There's a little bit of dance there. But that's fine. What I'd like to do is maybe have them all fall over or fall backwards. So I'm just going to touch my logo a little bit here, give it a little bit of rotation right before it starts. So when it drops, it will drop at an angle. This is a lot of fun. It looks like it needs a few more frames. Recalculate that. Look how fast this calculates. That's amazing. And it falls down. I could also just go in and tilt my, my collision plane because it really is just another layout item. And now it's sliding down, so we didn't want that. We might want that, but we don't want it right now. I'm going to delete that key so it's still flat. We will need to re-render that. So it's dropping in and it's falling down. Now by going in and tweaking certain settings, I probably could get that to not fall over. Maybe if it fell slow more slowly with less force. Let's try a negative two and check our collision, set our bounce to much smaller, calculate this. Well, they still fall over, but not as quickly. Suppose I could always go in and change the property. Let's open up. This is an interesting thing. I have my hard effects for my logo. Over here, I'm going to set 
my prop turn on my property with my collision. So I can actually have two windows open here. I can be setting my logo settings here and my collision settings here. Now normally I would have these off to the side so I can see what's going on. We're kind of limited with view space here because of the screen capture utility. Now once again this is something you pretty much just need to go in punch in numbers. Some of them make sense not all of them make sense, I'm afraid. But you pretty much just have to learn by doing it. Now this is using hard effects with a collision plane. And it is pretty useful. Um, we'll set our bouncing to much more our, our roughness, which gives a lot more randomness. And we'll calculate this and we'll see in a moment that we get a lot more life out of it. Now we are having some interpenetration going on and if you remember when we first introduced hard effects we have a way of fixing that and that's going into the properties setting our collision to self interaction. We're going to set that to box because we found that that worked better we'll need to recalculate and now they will bang into each other and knock each other out of the way in a very realistic and friendly way now we'll once again take some squeaking but boy if you had to go in there by yourself and set each one of those keyframes or those letters individually That'd be a lot of work. Now let's do the same thing using cloth effects. And we'll start this from scratch. We're going to load the curtain object once again. I'm going to rotate my light so we're not completely in the dark. There we are. I'm going to apply my cloth effects and I know right away that I'm going to want to fix the top point and maybe give me a little bit more geometry to work with. If I calculate this nothing happens because nothing is affecting it. So I'm going to add a collision object. It could be any object. I'm just going to add a basic collision object. Nothing is happening because it hasn't been calculated and there's no movement going on. First of all I'm going to make it smaller. Move it back and keyframe it so it's pushing through and then back again my curtain object. If I calculate this now, nothing happens because the curtain has not had its collision set up. So the collision detection defaults to none. I'm going to set it to default to all. So the whole object is susceptible to the collision object. As we can see, it certainly is. The collision object comes banging in and on its way back out again. Give us a few more frames to work with here. And once again we have our zero gravity curtains. So we need to go in and do some tweaking. Let's try working with silk, giving it 
the object itself some gravity and do a calculation with this we have a little more realistic motion actually that's not too bad as our collision object moves in and out and you can review how to improve the quality of our cloth by increasing the geometry increasing or decreasing the number for the resolution and also setting the amount of offset to our collision. Now this is just a uh, of course this is just a sphere but if we want to have like a object say like well say like a logo that comes in well let's try that position our camera alright we're going to load a logo object make it a little bit smaller to fit within the curtain okay perspective and we move it back Curtain is still remembering our calculation from the previous collision object, which was just a sphere. Now, th it's been my experience that this does take a good amount of work to get this to work properly. I have the logo object coming through, but the curtain is being kicked apart by that previous collision object. So let's clean this up and go to curtain, calculate, and there really is nothing happening here. The logo is moving through. It has not been told that it is a collision object yet. So Let's select our logo, go to Properties, Add Dynamic, and tell it it's a collision object. We're going to calculate that. And as it makes its way through, sure enough, it starts kicking the curtain out of the way, not very accurately at all. So it is time to go in and increase our resolution and do some tweaking. You can see where the L moves through here. It's starting to move the curtain away, but not nearly enough and not nearly quick enough. So we need to go in and play with our settings. So let's start with the curtain object. First of all, let's give us a little more geometry to work with. And also, under collision, our offset bigger. Make it appear to be farther away. 50 millimeters, that looks about right. I have hit the calculate tab so we can take a look at this. As you can see, this time, the cloth is deforming, at least in the beginning, pretty much how we would like it to be. But then in the moment, it starts breaking up. Also, it goes a little crazy in its response here. So the bounce on the collision is a bit too enthusiastic still. On the right side here, that's not looking too bad. Now if you're planning to do something like this, whether it's a logo or a vehicle coming through a curtain, be prepared to spend a fair amount of time tweaking it to get it right. You may wind up just adding a collision sphere 
and keyframing it so it follows the path and that gives you more control. It does work and it should work, but it is not quite as seamless or as easy to use and that's just part of the nature of cloth because there is so much that needs to be adjusted when you are working with cloth simulations. I pause recording for a second to go in and tweak some of these settings. I changed the now in the, the logo itself is just the collision object. I've reduced the bind power and the increased the roughness. And I also went in and changed some of the settings on my cloth effects. Uh, reduced the amount of spring. Also under my collision setting instead of 100% for bound, I had 50% and a little bit of friction, and I've calculated this. You can see it's getting closer to what you would imagine the logo coming through a curtain. I can still see it's pretty chunky. Now we've got a lot of pretty rough geometry in here. If this were a a job that I was going to be sending out, I would do much more subdivision on those curtains. Currently is at it's already at ten. So I would make it a lot higher. How high? Well, until it starts looking really good. I would have to set my resolution so it calculates smaller bits and pieces so that looks nice as well. We'll be saving this one. Save scene as curtain logo one. So you can load this up and take a look at the scene yourself. And it, it, it's it's getting there. But like I said, um, for myself professionally, this it still isn't quite there. Would need I'm I might spend at least an afternoon on just tweaking and getting all the look exactly like how I think it should be. I would then show it to a client which would have their own set of opinions on how it should be. But that's basically how you use collision, how you apply it to both the hard dynamics and the soft dynamics.